Uh, for question 30, they have this um, triangle, and DE is the mid-segment. Mid-segment means that if you take the uh, midpoint of uh, AB and the midpoint of BC and you connect them, it's called mid-segment. And uh, two properties of the mid-segment, one is that it's parallel to that base, and also it's one half the, the length of it. So if uh, DE is 7, that would make AC double that, which is 14. And AB is 10, that whole thing is 10. That would make this piece 5, because these, these two triangles, BDE and BAC, are similar triangles where um, they have the same angles. And each side um, in the small triangle is half the corresponding side in the bigger triangle. So if BC is 13, well, we, we have enough information for this question. Perimeter of ABC is 14 plus 10 plus 13, which is 37, which is the answer to that question. Moving on. Let's see what we have here. 31. Um, in right triangle DEF, angle D is 90 degrees. So D here. That's our 90 degree angle. There's E and F. F is 12 degrees less than twice angle E. So I'll put an X there for angle E. And for this, it's 12 degrees less than twice angle E. Well, twice angle E is 2X. 12 degrees less than twice angle E is 2X minus 12. Uh, the fact is that the three angles of a triangle have to add up to 180. So we get this equation, uh, 90 minus 12 is 78x plus 2x is 3x. We have 6x plus 78 equals 180. Subtract 78 from both sides, get 3x equals 102. Divide both sides by 3, uh, 102 over 3 is 34. and that's the answer to this question. Always be careful on a question like this. They wanted angle E. They could have also asked for angle F, in which case the answer would not be 34. It would be 2x minus 12, which is 68, minus 12, which is 56. But that's not what they asked for, but just warning you to be careful on, on that. Okay, next question. Question 32. Uh, we have this triangle here, x, y, z. And it's reflected over the line, I think that says x equals 2. Well, x equals 2 is a vertical line. You see, this is the point 2, 0, and 2, 1, and 2, 2. So x equals 2 is a vertical line. It's the line where all x coordinates are equal to 2. They want to reflect it, and they want to see where's the new image. Well, it's like a mirror. Like, here's point Y. Notice how it's exactly two units away from line uh, X equals 2. So if you go two more units, you'll get the point that you'll call Y prime. That's, that's called the image. Z is over here. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units away from line X equals 2. So if you go five more units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you get the point that's called Z prime. And x is 1, 2, 3 units away from this line. So go 3 more units, 1, 2, 3, and you get x prime. And then you connect the dots, and you have your answer. That's the image. Uh, that new triangle is congruent to the original one. Moving on. Question 33. I remember this question when it was on the Regents. It was a poorly worded question. They say line AB and CD are parallel and 10 inches apart. Well, it's actually not true. They, they're not, they are parallel, but they're not really 10 inches apart. Uh, this is, uh, they're, they're maybe 4 inches apart. So this is actually sort of not true, but they're just saying, assuming that they're actually 10 inches apart. Sketch the locus of points that are equidistant from A and B, A, B, and, and C, R, D, and also seven units from point R. And for this, they just want you really to estimate it. 
So points that are equidistant from two lines, for instance, here's a point that's the same distance from AB and CD, and here's another one. If you draw all of them, you would get a line that was parallel to both of them. They're, they're parallel to each other, so but it would be halfway between them, and that would make this 5 and that 5, if, if this thing was 10. This is sort of drawn to scale, I guess. But also, here's point R. So 7 inches from point R. Well, if this distance here is 5 inches, 7 inches would be a little bit more. So if I made a so all the points that are 7 in win inches away from R would form a circle. That was 7 inches. Every point on the circle is 7 inches, including this one and this one. So the answer is these, which they want you to mark with an X, these are the two points that satisfy the properties of being equidistant from the two lines and exactly seven inches from point R. This actually needed to be estimated. If this was drawn to scale, this could be done with a compass and it could look nicer, but because these lines aren't actually ten inches apart, they just wanted you to, to make an estimate. It says um, label, it says sketch the locus. That word sketch is different from construct, which would require using compass and straight edge. That was almost an unfair question. Uh, we complete that circle. Okay, moving on. Question 34. The base of a pyramid is a rectangle with a width of 6 centimeters and a length of 8 centimeters. Uh, find in centimeters the height of the pyramid if the volume is uh, 288 cubic centimeters. Well, there's a formula. It's one of the formulas on the sheet. The volume of a pyramid is one-third area of the base times the height. So, um, we know the volume is 288. We know that the width and base, uh, the width and, and length of the base is 6 and 8. I mean, uh, the area of the base, that's what this B stands for, is length times width. So it's 48, and the height is what we don't know. This, uh, this thing, by the way, looks something like this. So we know the area of the base is 48. We know what the volume is, we just don't know what the height is. And the way you solve this, I personally, I would divide both sides. I would multiply one third times 48 to get 16 and then divide both sides by 16 288 over 16 whoops 16 12 8 uh, 16 times 8 is going to be uh, 128 and 18 is the answer to this question okay moving on to question 35. So um, these are worth four points each. And this one's some kind of a, uh, a proof. Uh, given quadrilateral ABCD with AB is congruent to CD and AD is congruent to BC and diagonal BD is drawn, prove that, I hope this says angle BDC is congruent to angle ABD. Let's make sure that's what it says. Uh, here's the nicer copy on the PDF. So yes, um, prove that angle BDC is congruent to angle ABD. Well, let's draw, let's draw a picture first. Well, let's have a good diagram. We want to make the diagram accurate, so we want to make AB congruent to CD and AD congruent to BC. Now, I'm purposely not going to draw this as a rectangle, but I'll draw it like this. And I'll make my, notice how my vertices are going around A, B, C, D, in this case in clockwise, or in a clockwise order. I wouldn't want to go like A, B, D, C, A, B, C, D, like that. Okay, we have that A, B is congruent to C, D, and A, D is congruent to B, C and they drew in diagonal BD. And they want you to prove that angle BDC, which is here, is congruent. B BDC is not there. 
um, BD, BDC is here, they want to prove that that's congruent to ABD, which is here. Uh, so this thing's going to require some kind of two-column proof. There, there, there are actually different formats of proof that you're allowed uh, to use, but I'm going to do it just as a straight-out two-column proofs. You write statements and reasons. Um, always start with the given. So we have that BC is congruent to AD. And we also have that AB is congruent to CD. Those things are given. And, well, ge geometric proofs, so what I like to look at is look for triangles. If I could prove these two triangles are congruent, ABD and uh, uh, CDB, then these angles would be corresponding angles. But what I have uh, is two sides of triangle ABD congruent to two sides of triangle CDB. So all I need is one more side, and I can use the side, side, side postulate. That's why the next step is to say that BD is congruent to BD by reflexive. Some people like to go side, side, side. Now I have enough to say that triangle ABD is congruent. Some uh, teachers are sticklers about the order. So since A corresponds with C, we want to call this C. Um, B corresponds with D, so I'll go DB. And the answer is side angle side postulate. And now that those triangles are congruent, we could say that any other pieces that aren't mentioned are congruent also. In this case, the thing we were trying to say, which is angle ABD is congruent to angle CDB. And the reason is um, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. I personally would would accept CPCTC, but again, not every greater does. So it's a four-step proof. First we get the triangles congruent, and then because this angle is part of this triangle and this angle is part of that triangle, we can use that to get those two uh, pieces congruent also. Uh, question 36. Find an equation of a line passing through the point 0.65 and perpendicular to the line whose equation is 2y plus 3x equals 6. Well, you need two things to find the equation of a line. You need a, you need a point, which we have, and we need the slope. Now, they don't tell us the slope explicitly, but they tell us it's perpendicular to this guy. So the slope of that line, if you rewrite it as 2y equals minus 3x, plus 6. I did that by subtracting 3x from both sides and dividing both sides by 2. I get this. That's the slope of the other line. That means that when two lines are perpendicular, their slopes are negative reciprocals. So I take the negative reciprocal of this and I get 2 thirds. So now I have all the information I need. Um, you could use the point slope form where you say y minus the y coordinate equals the slope um, times x minus the x coordinate. This, this should be 5 here. That's the easiest way. But you could also use, most, a lot of people like point slope form. That's where you say y equals mx plus b. You replace the y with the 5, the m that you just calculated with the 2 thirds, and the x gets replaced with the 6. 5 equals, this becomes 4 plus b. So subtract 4 from both sides and get b equals 1. And the answer would be y equals 2 thirds x plus 1. OK, that'll be good for this part. Just one more part to go.